Welcome to JSA TV, where we're covering the latest news, trends, and innovations from thought leaders from within the digital infrastructure industry. And we are coming at you live. That's right. We are live, Jack, from beautiful Honolulu, Hawaii at the PTC 2025 conference. And I am here with my new best friend, Mr. Jack Backus. Jack is the principal strategist at Provident Data Centers. Jack Welcome to JSA TV. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, Dean. I'm, I'm happy to be here. Yeah, no, you look happy to be here, buddy. You were happy to find us here, I right? I was happy to, I was literally <laughs> sprinting to get here. Uh, this Jack's is, getting the steps in today. Um, I got my, I got all my, I got my steps in for the week. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I believe it. And uh, thanks for giving, uh, paying uh, homage to our producer, Courtney, behind the camera you know right away. No, this is, this is beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> okay, so, uh, Jack, now that you're here, now that you found us and we're cooling off a little bit, um, your favorite part about PTC 2025 to this point, and I, I know we're just getting started. What's your, what's any panels, anything in particular that you're uh, that you're uh, you're really uh, really happy you attended? Yeah, I mean PTC is it has fantastic speakers, panels, mm -hmm. but really, I mean Provident is here because we've got. A, a land pipeline of 3.8 gigawatts of powered land. Mm -hmm. It's one of the larger land pipelines um, in the uh, really in the country. Mm -hmm. um, we just announced our 500 megawatt data center in DFW area for phase one of of what will be a much larger mm -hmm. project. Uh, and we're open for business and PTC. I mean, it's like I told my wife. I'm working real hard out here. <laughs> you look like you're working real hard, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's 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 awesome. Um, so uh, something a little near and dear to my heart as a uh, the principal strategist at uh, JSA, you are the principal strategist at Provident. So as a strategist, as somebody, as as people who are paid quite literally to have kind of our fingers on the pulse of what's happening, uh, and to uh, and to have. Uh, um, uh, going forward strategies based on what those trends are. Tell me, what are the trends that you're seeing right now? What are the things that most excite you? What are the biggest challenges perhaps that you're seeing right now? Sure, I mean, I've been in the data center industry uh, for 10 years. I was at LinkedIn uh, for eight of those years mm -hmm. in the data center infrastructure group. Providence been open for business doing commercial real estate development across all platforms for 40 years. Mm -hmm. We have $8 billion in, in development uh, experience. The biggest thing for from a site selection perspective mm -hmm. is power. And, and I think every company that is looking to do a data center in 2025 and on, on, mm -hmm. on to 2030 is going to be looking at power and the power requirements. And then I think where it becomes difficult is then negotiating that with negotiating what you want to do aspirationally you want to go build a gigawatt campus. Okay, mm -hmm. great. Well, that's going to go in next door to somebody. That's going to be somebody's neighbor. And so what, what we are very, very good at is going to, into communities, listening to them, yeah. having those relationships and, and building really toward a, relationships that are going to be good for the community. Yeah. Um, there's a lot that we are going to be doing in 2025 into 2026 around workforce development. Um, we've been talking to iMasons about their um, uh, about their uh, registered apprenticeship program. Yeah, so great. I spoke to Santiago earlier today. He's wonderful. Great yeah, guy. Yeah. And and uh, and also, I believe her name is Courtney uh, on the who's their who's their talent oriented person yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, in charge of their talent pillar. Mm -hmm. um, we had a very long conversation uh, about that. I I was on the hiring board of the apprenticeship program at LinkedIn. So it's very near and dear to my heart. Yeah. My colleague Denitza has a PhD in labor economics. I met Denitza yesterday. She's wonderful. So you're going to yeah. see her again tomorrow. Okay. Uh, and I told her to get here early. <laughs> and, uh, wear, and wear her track shoes. And wear her track <laughs> shoes. Exactly. No, she she's from Paris. She was walking through uh, Paris with high heels, so she'll be fine. Good. So um, anyway, so um, from a site selection perspective, power is yeah. number one. Um, Within on the data floor, it's going to be cooling. Mm. It's going to be your and it's going to be your data floor interconnects. So uh, it's very very difficult. Basically, AI data centers are not resilient to data loss. Right. So if you send traffic from rack A to rack B and it 
you know, goes through bad fiber optic cable, you're going to lose your traffic. And then you actually have to go back to your previous checkpoint, which was 30 minutes prior for the entire data center. Not Jack, you're the first person to mention this and, and all the interviews so far. And this is such an important point. Well, I'm a data, data center designer and software engineer by trade. Yeah. And I think that's what really sets Provident apart is that, you know, we're land, but really yes. our focus is on, you know, we are going to be on the up, upcoming board members of the Texas Nuclear Alliance. Um, I'm personally, I'm sponsoring research on at SMU mm -hmm. on advanced power systems for data centers. Um, we, this is, you know, you asked what I'm doing from a strategy perspective mm -hmm. and it's really trying to push the industry forward, but starting even, it's like, we're land guys, we don't have to do that. Yeah. But we want to be really the data center industry focused land group. Huge. Who understands yep. it from, you know, from busway to chip and, and beyond. So that's, that's, that that's is, our goal. That is the one thing that became uh, immediately obvious to me, that it is more than just land. It is more than just procuring the uh, a place, but rather making sure that those communities are aware of the benefits associated with what's about to happen uh, in that place and all of the things and to make sure that all of the other uh, stakeholders who will be operating within that place understand exactly what's going on as well. So I'm going to give you a roundabout analogy. You walk into a Home Depot, yeah. you go to the, they have a whole aisle with, with bolts and nuts and washers and they're all very, very organized. And you can buy a kit that's got a, you know, a thousand bolts and nuts and washers of various sizes mm -hmm. and they're all organized. And you're going to pay maybe $50 for that kit. Mm -hmm. Now, let's say somebody came to you and they had this kit. It's all organized. And then alternatively, they had a bag that was just full of bolts and nuts and washers of yeah, various sizes. Yeah. Exactly the same. Maybe twice as many. Yeah. Right? But not organized. You're going to pay somebody to take away that bag. Yeah. But the kit that's got all the organization is, is something that, that, that's valuable. Yeah. So land is the same way. Land never changes. That piece of dirt has a particular lo latitude and longitude, always the same. Mm -hmm. Where a group like us comes in is we're selling you the kit that has everything organized. Yeah. My, my dad started a company. He likes to say he puts a bow on it. You know, mm -hmm. we, we put a bow yeah. on it. And because we have 40 years of land development experience, we can be a partner. We can work with up and down the value chain with in, uh, Powerhouse is a partner of ours. Uh, we've, we've partner of ours too. Yeah, yeah that's I, awesome. I know yeah, that. yeah, yeah. But we've, you know, we've uh, uh, been in, you know, we've been with Aligned, uh, Equinix, um, many some, some names people some have heard of. Yeah, names yeah, yeah. you've heard of, yeah. and they work with us because it's, you know, it's no drama working with Provident. Yeah. You know what you're getting and you know you're getting a lot of value. Yeah, no, I love it. I love it. So let's uh, let's get out our crystal balls. Um, as a as a strategist, where uh, where are we going with regard to, you know, high density computing and AI and GPU compute? Where, where's this all going? Well, in November, uh, the, the head of the National Security Council said AI is a strategic priority for the United States. Yeah. And AI is is really it's an incremental use of power. Power needs to to become a, a and is becoming I think a strategic priority for the United States mm -hmm. and I mean firm power use um, because and people know this uh, GPUs can be very are very power hungry mm -hmm. and they and and they will become more so now. I think the challenge for developers and the challenge for the industry is how do we approach this in a way that where where we can provide this these high value services that are really helping all sorts of people. Like you look at people who are doing AI, they're getting kids are being you know taught by AI tutors where they don't have access to tutors. Yeah. Right. I mean, this is really valuable yes. stuff, and then it also creates um, a, an accessible job pathway for communities and provides a nice tax base for communities without really using services. Mm -hmm. But there are demands that come from a data center. And the biggest ones, if sustainability isn't a goal, will be around um, uh, will be around water. Mm -hmm. There's concerns about noise. There's concerns about sure. pollution. So these are all the things that 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 um, 
you know, in we have various designs, some of which are are waterless AI AI mm -hmm. data center designs. Mm -hmm. So that is something that, and it depends on who we're partnering with in the in the context of that community. Yeah. Some communities they have more water than they know what to do with. Others, it's it's yeah. Yeah. very uh, scarce. you know scarce. Yeah. Yes, and and so that's something that we have to pay attention to. I think that we are just going to start seeing the impact that um, that AI has. Inference is going to become a um, uh, you know a big thing. Mm -hmm. What Provident has tried to do is stay really close to the to the major markets mm -hmm. or maybe secondary markets. We don't go into remote locations because we've been through a lot of real estate cycles, mm -hmm. and we want to make sure that we're providing the best possible product to the end customer at the end of the day. Yeah, Jack. Always a pleasure, man. Uh, thank you for for running through parking garages and and getting here. Literally, it was like that old. Um, <laughs> well, it was like a Hertz commercial, right, yeah, with OJ no, Simpson. No, I, in it. Yeah, I do remember. And he was hurtling. He was hurtling. Of, I mean, yeah. that shows my age, right? <laughs> yeah, well, I'm right there with you. Yeah, I know exactly yeah, what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah. But uh, I remember that. I think yeah. it was a Super Bowl commercial. Um, yeah, yeah, from like 1992 or something. Yeah. Well, it was a very much a pleasure. You know, love to uh, to chat more with you anytime at the conference yeah. you'll all be here through thursday anyone who'd like to meet with us uh you can find us on the on the ptc app i've got a lot of um uh openings in my calendar well fewer and fewer yeah but especially wednesday afternoon for um you know for anyone who if anyone's listening yeah. to um uh to, to hear more about our portfolio outstanding jack thanks for being here all right Okay. Appreciate it. Thank and you. thank you, viewers, for watching JSA TV. Uh, stay curious, stay connected, and happy networking. We'll see you soon. <laughs> Back at Corey. <laughs>